Finals of the 2010s, it had a really good mix of MVPs. You have some all-time historic individual performances. There's some legends in here, and there's some guys that really did not deserve the award. Yeah, you got your legends, you got LeBron, you got Kobe, you got Dirk, got Kawhi, then you got Andre Iguodala. Before we start ranking the finals MVPs of the 2010s, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. To clarify, before we begin the ranking, this is only going to be the performances in the finals. So it's not going to include the entire playoff run or the entire season. This is just their performance during the finals. And also, this is going to be a little different from when we ranked the NBA finals of the 2010s. In that video, me and Ben each put together our own lists. In this one, we combined our brain power together and we came up with just one singular list. Teamwork. Number 10, an obvious controversial take here. Is it Andre Iguodala? <laughs> it's Andre Iguodala. He obviously didn't deserve the award. In hindsight, he didn't deserve it at the time. He didn't deserve it, but he's got it, I guess. He didn't deserve to be in like the top three or four. <laughs> no, he did not. It should have gone LeBron, Steph, Draymond, <laughs> and then maybe Iggy. Yeah. The thing about this, obviously, Steph... He wasn't amazing, but 26 points, 6.3 assists, 5.2 rebounds, only really had one bad game, and that was game two. And then you had LeBron, who had a historic performance, minus his bad shooting percentage. 36 points a game, 13 rebounds, almost nine assists. And Iggy got the MVP for, quote unquote, slowing down LeBron. <laughs> Well, he slowed him down from 41 points per game yeah. to a healthy 30 points per game. Yeah. He still led the series by far in points per game, even with Iggy on him. And yes, did Iggy quote unquote slow him down? Sure. Did he slow him down enough to warrant winning finals MVP? If he held LeBron to like 20 points per game, then yeah, sure. But dropping from 41 to 31, that's not good enough. Yeah, the Warriors were down 2-1 in this series. They start Iggy in game four and they win the next three. So that's kind of why, but it's more of just an adjustment. It's not like Iggy completely changed everything. Exactly. Now at number nine, we have Kawhi Leonard in 2014. And again, another obvious pick. He deserved this MVP though. He was solid in this series, but this was just an overall team effort by the Spurs. Yeah, this was just the purest definition of team basketball. If you want to see a team that encapsulates that phrase, beautiful basketball, no team does it better than this 2014 Spurs team. And because of that, there's really not going to be a guy where you're like, oh yeah, he's the obvious finals MVP. Like it could have been Parker, it could have been Kawhi, it could have been Duncan, but ultimately you go with Kawhi because he's giving you 17 points per game and he's playing defense. And this is another one of those things where Kawhi kind of got the award because he guarded LeBron. This was before he was really a star, but I think once he won this award, he kind of cemented himself. This guy's going to be a future star in this league. Oh yeah. When he won this award, everyone's like, this is the guy that's going to carry the Spurs for the next however many years. Number eight, though, we got Kevin Durant in 2018. Now, KD definitely played well in this series, a series that was not even close. Durant had it so damn easy he did. with this Warriors team, and I will stand by this to my deathbed. Stephen Curry should have won finals MVP in this series. Yeah, I think the thing is, in these series against the Cavs, once they got Durant, the Cavs, their main focus was, we got to try to slow down Steph. So that just gave Durant so much room to work, wide open shots and everything. And sure, he did hit the huge shot in game Game three again, but the dude had it so easy. The dude had it easier than any superstar, any finals MVP ever. And yet LeBron still outplayed him. <laughs> he did. LeBron completely outplayed him. Obviously had the iconic game one. I don't know. Steph didn't shoot great. I guess Durant, in my opinion, kind of deserved it, but still a kind of fake finals MVP. Now we have Kawhi Leonard in 2019, and maybe some people expected this to be higher up, and I understand that. The thing is, he had some good games, he had some bad games, I think you gotta knock him a little bit for the Clay and KD injuries. Well, this is an all-time great playoff run. It's not exactly an all-time great final. 
games. Like, he had good games in games two, three, and four, but in games one, five, and six, like, he's just okay. And if you look at his stats, they're not particularly eye-popping. 28 and a half points, 10 boards, four assists on 43% shooting and 35% shooting from three. Like, this is decent. This is all right, all but right, this right. is more of a great playoff run than a great NBA Finals. Yeah, I completely agree. And this is at the point where we're getting to some historic Finals performances. So, again, this is a really amazing run and everything and credit to Kawhi, but just not quite as good as the other guys on this list. Number six, it's KD in 2017. And once again, he had it very easy. He did. The thing is though, we couldn't put this any lower on the list because the stats are absolutely insane. Oh, the stats are, oh geez. <laughs> These are my player stats. Yeah, 35 points on basically 56% shooting from the field and 47% from three. Who does that? That's all time final stats. A guy who gets only wide open shots because he's got Stephen Clay as teammate. <laughs> yeah. And Draymond feeding him the ball. Yeah, it did help you had Stephen Clay with him, so that helped. In this series, again, it was just super easy. It was a little bit closer in 2018, but the Warriors just had it so easy once they got KD. I mean, the only game the Warriors lost was game four, where the Cavs put on one of the best offensive performances in NBA Finals history. It took that to take a single game off of them. Yeah, KD, he showed up every game. He had 30 plus points in every game, but just based on how easy he had, at it, we couldn't rank him any higher. Coming at number five, we have Kobe Bryant in 2010. The thing that holds Kobe back from being higher on this list is the God, shooting hey. percentage. Oh, he shot like didn't he? Yeah, he did. 40% from the field. Ooh. He had that game seven. He was six to 24. Ah. The one thing I have to mention though is this was a different era, a slower pace. There's only twice in this series where a team scored over 100. Kobe was the leading scorer in every game besides game two, though, against the Celtics, who are one of the best defensive teams in the league. And like you said, this was early 2010, so the Celtics were slowing down the pace. The Lakers are slowing down the pace, too. So you don't expect, like, the gaudy numbers you see from guys now, but you know he got big points for getting revenge on the Celtics for 08. Yeah, he got insane revenge. I was doing some research for this video, and apparently Kobe Bryant listened to the song Don't Stop Believing every day for two years. <laughs> Because that was the song that played when he lost the finals in 2008. That is just one of those petty Kobe <laughs> stories that you're like, okay, there's no way that's true, but also it's completely believable. Yeah, Kobe's the type. Number four, though, we got LeBron in 2012. Now, he actually had better stats in this series than another series that we'll talk about soon. But this was a much easier series for him because while he was playing against the Thunder, who had Kevin Durant, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, all that jazz, they were all babies. Even then, Durant still averaged more points per game in this series. One thing that's kind of weird about this series, it only went five, but games two through four were only decided by six points or less. So it was kind of a close series. Yeah, LeBron, you look at the stats, it's insane, but you can only put it so high just based on kind of the moment and everything. Yeah, and he still had Wade with him as his sidekick. Wade was still at that, you know, pretty much elite level. He hadn't quite fallen off yet. And you know, LeBron had some good moments in this series. He had that game four where he had the cramp in his leg and still managed oh, yeah. to hit that three-pointer. <laughs> That's a great moment right there. But really can't put it any higher than number four. Solid performance, really good, but only as high as four. Now 2013 for LeBron, we got ranked at number three, and this was an all-time iconic series. And the reason where this ranks at three is because game six, LeBron was insane, and game seven, he was probably even better. See, game seven of this series is one of the least remembered games in NBA history for how well he played. Like 37 points, 12 boards on good shooting, hits that jumper to seal the finals that nobody talks no about. No one ever brings it up. No one ever brings it up. Everyone's just like, LeBron's not <laughs> It's like, do you people not remember that he hit a shot to seal a championship? <laughs> he also had to steal the next play to completely seal the game. That right. also doesn't get talked about. Right. And we all know like the Ray Allen shot. That's one of the most iconic shots in finals history. But LeBron led the comeback to get there. I know I'm going to sound like LeBron. <laughs> but 12 point comeback to get there. You got to give him some credit for that. Oh, I'll give him a lot of credit for that. 
Number two, though, we got Dirk Nowitzki in 2011. And I pushed a little bit for this to be number one, <laughs> but it's not quite there because honestly, the number one deserves to be number one. But don't let that take away from one of the great NBA finals of all time. Dirk's stats aren't particularly amazing. 26 points per game, 9.7 boards, two assists on honestly kind of bad shooting looking back, like 41% from the field, 37% from three is good. But considering his career to that point, considering what he was up against, the big three miles. Miami Heat. This is an unbelievable performance. Yeah, this has to be ranked high at the very least second just because of the performance, the moment. Nobody gave Dirk a chance to win this series. He was known as a playoff choker before this and just what a series from him, especially that iconic game two. Let a 15 point comeback. The Mavs went on a 20 to two run. He sealed it with that layup. Just legendary performance from Dirk. Yeah, no NBA championship in history, I think holds more value. Yeah, just incredible. His second best player was Jason Terry, which great to Jason Terry, he's a solid player, but he never made an all-star game. And Dirk won a title with that roster, just for story. That leads us to number one. It's obvious. LeBron in 2016 against the Warriors. Just historic, incredible. What can you say about it? He had, in my opinion, the best three game stretch in basketball history. Games five through seven, he was just on God mode. I will say, I feel so bad for anyone born after the year 2016 because they didn't get to watch this live. They missed out big time. This was unbelievable to watch as a living person. I, not a Cavs fan at all, but watching game seven is one of the greatest experiences I've ever had as a sports fan. Watching LeBron in games five, six, seven, just carry the Cavs on his back with a little bit of help from Kyrie in there. It's a man on a mission. It is. He scores 41 points in game five on the road in the Warriors. Him and Kyrie each get 41. Game six gets 41 again, gets 11 assists. And it's like, how does he top that? A triple double in game seven NBA finals. The block at the end on Iggy. The greatest defensive play in NBA <laughs> yeah, history. Literally the greatest defensive play in NBA history. One of only three players in NBA history to get a triple double in game seven of the finals. Just what else can you really say about it? I'm at a loss for words. I will say, if he had finished that dunk over Draymond, oh. that would have been the greatest play in sports history. I don't even care. That's the video, guys. How would you rank the finals MVPs of the 2010s? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting that like button as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.